Lo again, decides her acknowledged talent. Trademarks of our guest today include her warm smile and charming personality. Please join us in welcoming the Emmy Award winning Lois Nettleton. And now, here's your man of the half hour, Skippy Lowe. Lois Nettleton, oh, the 25th anniversary revival on Broadway, the uh, Blanche Dua streetcar named Desire. Yeah. Tell me about this great Blanche Dua. Oh, well. What an evening that was. Oh, God, yes. It was, uh, well, it's my all time favorite role, and, uh, and actually my greatest success, I would say, really. Um, it's, uh, it's just, I think it's the best woman's role ever written. It is, isn't it? Uh huh. I, I mean, and I've played Lady Macbeth, and I've played, uh, you know, a lot of other wonderful women's roles, but uh, no, there's nobody like Blanche. This is a real woman's role. Yeah. Are there any women's roles today, right now, a lot, would yes, you say? Yes, there are. It's, um, I, we don't, uh, you know, Tennessee Williams comes along <laughs> once, <laughs> and God only knows He writes for women, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. all of his, uh, but all of his plays, I mean, he was such a genius, and, and uh, it's just not, not easy to find um, that many. Uh -huh. Great plays and great roles. How was it evening that evening, the 25th anniversary of uh, Tricar that evening when you opened the curtain? The opening? Opened, the audience is out there. Well, uh, it was. It opened in New York. Uh, yes. Actually, we, uh, we did it at the Lincoln Center right. first because it had been running and then the cast was leaving and um, so I took over the role and uh, I didn't see uh, Rosemary Harris, Harris was playing yes. it. And I said, I can't play it if I see anybody else do it, which of course is true. I mean, you right. see somebody else do it. So they said, well, that's all right, you know. So I, I went in, and uh, 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 Jules Irving directed me in it. Um, he hadn't been the, Ellis Rabb was the original director. And the Stanley and I just, you know, uh -huh. were rehearsed and, and uh, fitted into the uh, production. And, um, and so we opened actually there, and then it was such a success, and the audiences were building and building, right. and we had to leave because it was a limited engagement, so Jules said, we're going to take it to Broadway, <sighs> take it to the St. James Theater. Yeah. So it was the Broadway opening that was really um, the, the, the big, a big one, <laughs> the yes, big for you. one. <laughs> and I met Tennessee Williams that night. He Did came, you really? He sent me roses, and I met him after the show, uh -huh. and uh, he was delighted, and uh, he said, it was a funny thing, he said, you remind me of my favorite actress. Now, guess who his favorite actress was? I don't think anybody would guess. Oh, well, I like Kim Stanley, so go ahead. Well, she's my favorite. Is she? Yes. Me too. Oh, what, yeah. what? Miriam Hopkins. Was that Tennessee's favorite? Isn't I know Ken. He's never, Tom no, I never know. told me this. Never. Uh, he might have had other favorites, but he said that you? night, he said, you remind me of my favorite actress. And I said, who? And he said, Miriam Hopkins. Oh, isn't that uh, funny? Isn't that wonderful? So immediately I thought, I've got to catch up with some of her <laughs> old movies, because I thought, uh -huh. what is she like? What is she? Because, you know, I didn't right. know. And so a couple of times I've seen her since, and I thought, yeah, I see yeah. something there, you know, a little yeah, right, bit of something. Right. But it was a very exciting night, and of oh. course we got great reviews and all that. No, so it was just the, the reviews were terrific. Uh, it was ah. a thrill yeah. and uh, hard to beat. <laughs> Grew up in Chicago. Yes. Went to uh -huh. school there. Uh, yes, uh, I went to school there and in New York. I moved around a lot, uh -huh. lived with a lot of different relatives. And so how did Lois Meadow? Uh, how did she get into this? Lois, tell me, how did you get into show bits? At what age? Well, it started when I was a little girl. I was at you know one of the same old uh, actor story. Uh, at seven, I was doing plays in the backyard, and at nine, uh -huh. I was in a drama club in, in uh, grammar school. And at 11, I trotted over and joined a community theater. They uh -huh. had a children's section, and I got in. So and you always uh, wanted to be an actress. That though. was it. Uh -huh. Got into local radio stuff and then local television stuff, little things here and there, and uh, just did it. Forever. You know, you're a survivor, though. Anyone, I mentioned your name around town. Oh, what a surviving actress. Oh, well. This means like you work all the time, yeah. you do good women's roles. Mm -hmm. It seems like I work all the A lot of people tell me, they say, you're always working well. You uh -huh. know, in actual fact, I, I work. I am a working actress. Right. I mean, I make a living at it. Um, I don't work probably as much as I'd like to. I'd like to work every day. Uh -huh. But you do have to be selective and, 
and I, I never want to do anything that I just feel would be uninteresting, dull, something that would just be eh, ho-hum. Uh -huh. I, I love the work so much that I really, even if it isn't like a huge, fantastic role, it's something that, you know, it has something in it right, that, right. that can be exciting for the people uh -huh. right, to contribute You want to something. tell a story, yeah. to let them understand mm -hmm. what's happening. So it's, it's uh, and being selective, it's, uh, you know, you say you can't work every day, but you try. Uh -huh. <laughs> theater, the theater is your love, though, oh, yeah, isn't it? Oh, yeah, the theater is my favorite, and I do theater all the time. Yeah. Why is everyone's favorite love, the good actresses and good actors, when I talk to Kim Stanley, Shelley Winters, all these great actresses, the theater is their love. Why yeah. is that? Well, the theater, you ha the actor has more total control in the theater. Right. Uh, the work is all done in rehearsal. So everything that everybody wants to get done and all of the things that, you know, however it's right. set with the director, the writer, the producers, every actors, uh -huh. everybody. But once the curtain goes up, it's in your hands. Uh -huh. Stump as you might. <laughs> um, so it's, um, it, and it's not only that, but it is a, it's a life that you're living from beginning to end. Once you've created that, um, the curtain goes up, and there is nothing else. Right, it's right. that's the world, and from beginning, and you carry it, and it's yours, uh -huh. and you control, and it goes right to the end of the curtain, uh -huh. and then that's it. Whereas all of the other me media, uh -huh. it, it's uh, it, it's a community effort. Yes. But there's never a point at which you have total control. Right, right. Uh, I, like television act, and movies and right. stuff like the that. Right, the director has the most control. It's Does he really? The, it's the director's medium. And mostly in television. Television and movies too, except yeah. that even they don't have total uh -huh. control. Uh -huh. I mean, then it goes, you know, I mean, every, it's, right. it's a community thing. I love it all. I love to act and it doesn't matter. So you, you know, love show business. So I love show business. Yes, I lo yes. love acting. But well, theater is, is the best for the actor, I think. You came here uh, about a year ago. You did a wonderful show in Los Angeles, uh, Little Night Music. Yes, at oh, the Music at the, Center. Uh, Doolittle. It was Amundsen at the Doolittle. Uh huh. Oh, uh -huh. What a show! Oh, I loved it. I loved playing Desiree. That's that was Desiree. one of my. Who was in the show with you? Uh, uh, Gwyneth John? Johns. Uh -huh. I played uh, Madame Armfeld, Armsfeld, uh -huh. the mother who right. was originally the original Desiree on Broadway. Right. And John McMartin was my Frederick, and a wonderful, wonderful cast. It the was reviews just were great. I heard about this. It was so. I mean, it was one of those things where I couldn't wait to get to work every day. Really? Of course, I feel that way anyway. If I love, uh, you know, what I'm doing. So to be well, as in a good actress, you're exciting to go to work about it. Oh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, every day it's like you get ready and just say, and especially because when you know that the audience is going to love it, and you just know every single time you do it uh -huh. at the end they're going to be cheering and yelling because they did they loved right. little night music it Catherine was Hepburn I got to get back you worked with her yes oh, yes one of the great actresses too uh very early on I was um uh, it was at the Stratford. you were very young then uh yeah very young <laughs> where, where, where was this at, at Stratford uh Connecticut uh -huh. at the uh Stratford uh, Shakespearean, Shakespearean thing company mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh American Shakespeare Festival actually and uh she did, um, she did uh, Portia uh -huh. in, in um, uh, Merchant of Venice, and the other one was Much Ado About Nothing. No, not Much Ado About Nothing. Uh, oh, dear, I always forget the name of the play. Isn't that awful? And I think it was Much Ado About Nothing. Yes, go ahead. It is, yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I played Nerissa, who's her, like, uh -huh. her little maid that runs around after her right, in, right. Uh, in Merchant of Venice. And then I played Hero, the ingenue, in, in the other one. Um, it is Much about Ado About Nothing, isn't it? When you were yes. a little girl, you were just a little girl, really. Come well, on, Catherine Hepburn. No, I meant you. <laughs> working with Catherine Hepburn. Oh, what did you learn? She you learned something. Well, I learned one of my really wonderful lessons in acting from her. Um, being young and and highly emotional and everything, I even had a te temper tantrum once, and which is isn't like me at all. I mean, I did am really? so. I believe you keep your temperament for your acting, and you don't let it, you know, yes. flow around and get in everybody's way. But I was so furious one day. I screamed and yelled and ran out of my dressing room and everything. And it was something, it was as though somehow my role was being taken out of my hands because uh -huh. the director said something and she, or she said something, and then the director said, yes, he agreed. And I said, but that's not the way I want to do it. Well, I was an absolute uh -huh. idiot. But what happened was that what she was saying was one of the greatest lessons uh -huh. <laughs> I ever learned. Uh -huh. All it was was that I was so busy trying to be, 
you know, and trying to show. Not that I, I was always a method actress. I mean, I act from inside. You are a method actress. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, okay. you know, well, what, whatever wow. that means. <laughs> right, <laughs> But right. I really do Strauss work from the yeah, yeah, right. mm -hmm, actor's studio. Right. And all that. Uh, but she was telling me about keeping my body still because, you know, young actors have a tendency sometimes to do, and sometimes you're so busy doing here <laughs> you know, it's not connected. Uh -huh. So she said, just be still. And I thought I was doing all uh -huh. these wonderful uh -huh. things. It's, well, all it's, it's, all it's all within. It's all within. When your hands move, it's like when you're talking yes. here. And I do, I am a handy talker. Uh -huh. I use my hands uh -huh. a lot. But it's like everything that uh -huh. happens, happens from there. And it should happen uh -huh. unless you're a very wonderful, great technical actor, which mm -hmm. a lot of English actors are, and they're brilliant, where they use, they do everything. You know, they right. need to know what little finger. Well, I'm not that kind. I'm just uh -huh. like a right from the inside. So that was your biggest lesson you've learned That's in right. life? That's in right. In life, would you say? No, no, no. In what acting. was your biggest lesson in life that you've learned <laughs> in life, to say? Um, well, that's hard to say. I've learned so many. <laughs> I, a life is full of lessons every day. Maybe, maybe, maybe the most valuable is that you've got to have some kind of a philosophy. You've got to have some kind of inner something that keeps you going because this is a rotten business it i is, mean i love acting but i hate the business uh -huh. <laughs> it's just terrible as we all yes, know yes of course and the business end the thing yes. of the struggle the thing of the rejection uh -huh. the thing of uh -huh. you know that whole thing um but so i think any actor really needs to have a very strong inner philosophy yes. and i guess it took me a while to learn that because when you're very young you're so busy doing that you don't even think about it and then you run into troubles and you say wait a minute right. <laughs> And so whether it's uh, based in religion or psychology mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. whatever, just some kind of thing to what get has, you through What day. has been the hardest for Lois Nettleton in life? Because you've been in show business all your life. Yeah. And you have a mother you take care of. Mm. You have, you're very close. Mm. And you're very spiritual. Mm. <laughs> wow, what makes uh, you think what's, all that? What's been, I see it. I see oh. it just talking to you, sitting here. Well. Uh, what has been the hardest? For Lois Nettleton? Mm, probably it's probably personal relationships and being able to really be involved with people because you're always, I, being a gypsy actress, which I am, I do all the media and uh -huh. I'm always on location or right. traveling on some other city doing a play. To maintain, I have been married and I was divorced. Um, I wouldn't say that it was the separations and all of that or the fact that I was in the business caused it but in all of my relationships particularly you know romantic man woman yes. relationships it's very hard to really have a, a an ongoing <laughs> kind of relationship uh -huh. unless I suppose you're in a position where either for a long period of time you're doing a lot of work in New York, one uh -huh. play after another, or if you're doing a series, yes. somewhere where your life settles down. But my not life never settles down. I've done four series. I mean, series that series. you know, Series, yes, um, you have. Series that I certainly I've have. Uh, and yet, none of them. Uh, I've, none of them for more than one season. <laughs> never. <laughs> no, I've never had a long really <laughs> going series. So I the glitter, the glitter, the glitter was more than I thought. It was more than that. Well, the, all glitter, the glitters was all the glitters. Uh, one season. One mm -hmm. season. Um, yeah. Accidental family. One season. You can't take it with you. One season. And then, uh, uh, in the heat, in of, the the heat night, of the night, was ongoing. But my character was only one season. It was so nothing against me. It's not that I wasn't any good, folks. <laughs> but you, five time, uh, uh, five time uh, Emmy Award nominated. Mm -hmm, six. Five times? Six times? Mm -hmm. Six times? Mm -hmm. Once six? we're in the heat of the night, as a matter of fact. You've got yes. to nominate it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, God. so I've been very lucky. I really have. I say that not in, like, false modesty. So you've been, been lucky, lucky in life. Oh, yeah. Lucky that I love my work, that uh, life has allowed me to do it, make uh -huh. a living at it. I've had wonderful, wonderful roles, wonderful success, and... Um, Really, so when you, you know, ask, uh -huh. like, what was the worst, I think it's just that my own personal life, uh -huh. sometimes I think, wouldn't it be lovely if I could just kind of straighten that well, out a what? little bit? And, I'm going to ask you another question. <laughs> What's your happiest memory? You have a happiest memory in... I'm sure I don't. You don't? I've so ma I'm, I'm a very happy person, basically. Are and you I really? Have, oh, and I have so many happy memories. I, I can't think of Lois Nettleton's sitting there telling me she's a happy person. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. 
enough. What <laughs> makes you so? What, you know, what makes you <laughs> so happy? That's okay. Well, that's sniffle. lovely. What <laughs> makes you so happy, Lois, in life? You just. Um, I think probably the fact that I have been allowed, and I really do love my work so much, the fact that I have been allowed to do it in life and do you it mean, all the time. Uh -huh. um, the fact that I have, um, I really love life and I love uh -huh. people. I mean, you know, that sounds so general. Yes, I know. But I can't help, I can't go into a you know, three-hour explanation. <laughs> all I can say is that I, I really, my, my feelings about people are really, very loving and excited so and I'm very Lois excited Nettleton. about life. Lois so gets up in the morning, yeah. feels good about herself. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yep. interesting. Favorite movie? You have a favorite movie you've done? That I've done? A favorite film? Well, um, not really, not all together. I would probably say maybe the one that stands out more than any other, if I were to say... The man well, in the Glass Man booth. in the Glass Boot. My uh -huh. favorite. Yes, yes. With? Yeah with Maximilian Schell, who oh. did a, a, a fantastic performance. Uh, probably most people would remember it. Um, and he was nominated for an Academy Award. Um, he was just fantastic. And the movie was, was I think, very one to be proud of altogether. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it was fun doing it. It was fun doing it. little uh -huh. Israeli uh, Sabra accent. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You were in Butterfly? Yes, uh-huh, yeah. Uh, who was in that? I really remember. That was Pia Zadora's Pia Zadora's movie. Right uh -huh. now. Stacey they Key, all make fun Orson at Orson Welles. Why? Yes, Orson Welles. Tell me why oh. do they make fun at Pia? Because she's such a nice person. Well, I and don't a know. And a good actress. I don't know why anybody does that. <laughs> I think it's because she, knowing that she had a lot of money behind her, yeah. a lot of influence behind her, yeah. it's like, you know, you really have to prove yourself. And and it's just, uh, uh -huh. <coughs> I think it's just harder for her to prove herself to people than, than others. I don't as, know. Has Lois Nettleton, Nettleton ever turned down a part that you regret it later? Well, a couple of times I think so, but not with any great regrets. Um, mm -hmm. A series once that turned out to really be a very successful series. And really? I could have been very rich by now if I uh -huh. had taken it. Um, I don't think that's important for you. Is well, it? it's not important, but it's nice if you don't have to think about it, you know. Uh -huh. I mean, uh -huh. for any actor. Do you right? believe in fate, uh, Lois Nettleton? Fate? Yes. Well, not, not in the sense that I don't believe that everything is already laid out, you know. But I, I, I think we, we do have a, uh, we do have, we can make our own decisions and we have a free will thing. But I do, I'm very, I'm, a, I'm very fatalistic in the sense that I think, well, if it happened that way, it happened that way. I mean, you no know, use crying over it or regretting, and I don't uh -huh. regret things. Okay. I don't regret Looking really back, anything. Looking back, when you were in Chicago yeah. at the Goodmans mm -hmm. studying mm -hmm. as an actress, mm -hmm. then going to New York, mm -hmm. doing Broadway, mm -hmm. films, uh, you know, you're a busy lady. Mm -hmm. You've had a good life. You're saying you had a good life. Mm -hmm. and you have no regrets. Mm. Well, because uh, I figure most that, of it is still ahead is of me anyway. So. Is that the secret of Lois Nettleton's uh, inner being right now? I'm looking at, I I'm think, thinking. I think so. I think the fact that I really do appreciate. And I think that all of the bad things in life are, are lessons to be learned from. Right. And I think that every day, I mean, also, I live totally in the present. In the present. I have, yes. Is that I, the secret? I, maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's part of my own way, you yes. know, of, of because it's like all the wonderful things that have happened are there and they're wonderful memories and once in a while it comes up like, you know, you mentioned things, you know, out of yes. my past and I think, oh yeah, that was wonderful. It's nice to think about. It. But I don't, I don't, um, it's there. It's part of my life. I've had it. Uh -huh. It's like I don't need to have that same thing over right, again. Right, right. And today is wonderful and all my future things that are coming yes. up next are wonderful uh -huh. and I figure my rest of my life I expect to go on for quite a while coming it's going to be up. wonderful so come on you brought a clip coming up let's see this wonderful clip what did you just do you did a film or oh yes it? this is a lovely <laughs> lovely uh, what I call a little art film uh, because <coughs> it's made by Chanticleer Productions uh, they do these wonderful half hour films some of which have won Academy Awards uh, I think last year one did uh, they're entered into film festivals and everything, so it's very artsy, you know. Is it not? Little. And so Paul Dooley uh, co-starred, uh, we co-starred in it, and it's called Traveler's Rest. Wonderful, wonderful company. Priscilla Pointer, uh -huh. she's so beautiful yes. in it. 
Oh, and Bruce Gray and Catherine Lang, and that was it. That's the whole cast. And it's about these two people just meet. Their lives come together, uh -huh. and it's the whole thing of them uh, getting to know each other in, a, in an interesting way. You think it's going to be kind of, well, I don't know, well, well, the way it starts off, but this well, is just a little tiny excerpt. Let's just see it, it okay? okay? Can you see this? Thank you. My husband died, too. His heart... Now, I'm sorry. Ah, uh, Marty had already left me for another woman. That's a shock. Happens all the time. I mean that he would leave you. Oh, oh, well. <laughs> yeah, you see me for one night on my birthday, naturally, I'm at my best. She was a secretary. A child, actually, just a few years older than my daughter. He left his job and they went to Seattle to open a used bookstore. He read maybe ten books in his entire life and he opens a bookstore. I'm doing Ida Lupino now. You do whoever you want. They lived together for two years. And then in August, he had a massive coronary. <gasps> How can anybody sleep around here? <laughs> yeah, there was no advance warning, no history, just... And he was dead. There with his old books and his young girlfriend in Seattle, Washington. I never knew that part of him. He always kept everything in. He never told me what he wanted. Well, maybe he didn't know. I didn't go to the funeral. My children went. They told me she was very shaken by it, and I said, good. <laughs> I'm sorry to be dumping all this on you. Look, it's my birthday. You light the candle, I'll go flush the toilet, and we'll just start all over again. Here it comes. Thank Photographed you. so beautifully. Thank you. That that's a, a lovely little film. It's going to be on Showtime. Uh huh. Sometime this winter. I'm not sure they don't have. You were saying something day. back. We were talking about Kim Stanley, one of the greatest actresses ever. Mm, she was my the idol. goddess. What yes. a great role. I'm sitting here looking at you right now. The goddess. Do you ever do that scene? The goddess. No. Well, the funny thing when you say do that scene, now isn't that oh, interesting? You, know you know what I mean. I know, but isn't that interesting? Um, I just went, I'm, I'm a member of the actor's studio. Right. And just last spring I said, oh, well, because I'd love to work every day and you can't work every day. And I thought, but I just, you know, you got to use yourself. Tools so, keep it sharp. Right. So I went back to the actor's studio. I'd never gone to the one here, only the one in uh -huh. New York. So I started working. The, and the first the minute I showed up, somebody said, oh, you want to do a scene with me? And I said, uh -huh. great, anything. I'll do anything. I want to work. And I exactly. want to keep honing my, I'm reading rereading a Stanislavski book right now. Because when you, because, no, because you've got to keep your tools that's sharp right, that's when you're right. not working in front of the camera. Right. So the scene she wanted to do was the goddess. She wanted me to do the mother because she's a young girl. Yes. She was doing the, you uh -huh. know, and, uh, and we had a wonderful time doing it. You'd be yeah. one, oh, you're wonderful. That's a great, great role. I love that scene with Kim Stanley. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shelly Winters is teaching right now in, in town. Mm -hmm. Kim's teaches here. Shelly teaches. Mm -hmm. They're all teaching. Mm -hmm. And, uh, why is everyone teaching so? They're wonder. They're showing their the love for the theater. I think so. You know, I sometimes feel guilty about that because I I think well. Are you going to share I, that with us? I, I I have no interest in teaching. Oh, well, okay. I just want to do my work. You know, uh -huh. but I feel guilty because sometimes I think you know you really there should come a point. Well, maybe later on down the uh -huh. line there should come a point. Uh -huh when you should share with the right. people coming up. And so maybe someday I will be you unselfish. I want you to share this. <laughs> if they You've worked me. with great stars, George C. Scott. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, let's, mm -hmm. let's get back. What film was that? The uh, George C. Scott one was uh, called Fear on Trial. Right. It was a, um, it was a, a TV special, and it was, uh, it was, it was a two, two hour special, I think, movie. And it yeah. was based on the the blacklisting and red channels of the 1950s uh -huh. in the McCarthy era. Uh -huh. And I played Kim Hunter. You did play mm -hmm. it. Oh. I played uh, 
the actual I mean the actual yep. actress right. in the show uh -huh. uh, I played her you know testifying in court working with George e. Scott Oh he's Delight. lovely he's lovely yeah he's just Charles Colbert another uh, one Yes I You've really with some, some great some actors. Oh, wonderful. You have any favorites stuff. out there? Any in stuck in your mind favorite? No, I just, uh, I mean, there have just been so many right from the time I was a kid. As a matter of fact, I always really have been very lucky to have wonderful, wonderful people to work with. And I. What's your greatest yeah. achievement in your mind? Do you have one? Um, Lois Middleton, really. What is Lois Middleton's greatest achievement? <laughs> I don't know. See, I don't think that as, as a person, I can't say you know that I've done anything all that great in my yes, life. Yes, you I, have. Well, I mean, don't sit there. Well, and I tell mean, us. aside from my work. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but well, uh, that's important. Yeah, because other than that, I mean, you know, I mean, I try to be a good person. I have, I have help lots others. of people that I love and I'm close to, right? And and I mean, I I just you know live live life. So I don't think I've. But I think probably my work and you know I just think the, the, the best things that I've done have been my greatest achievement you sing in the choir yes that's charming you sing yes. in this lovely Hollywood choir it's in yes. Hollywood Church uh-huh St. Ambrose uh -huh. I think that's charming well, what's the choir it's called lovely. just the Qua St. Ambrose choir we I do two concerts a year do you really yeah. I think that's charming yeah. I just love it well it's it, it means a lot so you're very uh, spiritual aren't you Lois Nettleton well uh, but I mean in spiritual, the sense that with I'm, not just religion yeah, spiritual, with yeah. helping people, compassion. I, well, I, I can't say that I'm, you know, terribly good or that I do all that much for people, but I, but in the spiritual in a way that I really do believe that the inner, I read a lovely line the other day, a book someone gave me, I'm starting to read. The line was, and I think it was Oliver Wendell Holmes or President Jefferson or somebody like that, uh -huh. there were so many quotes. Uh -huh. Anyway, the line was, I am not a human being having a spiritual experience. I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. Mm. And I think, not in a, like a strictly religious sense or anything, uh -huh. but I think, I think that just knowing that it's, there's a lot more than this. Uh -huh. I mean, our little time on Earth, like that. You know, three and a half minutes I see, we're all going to be floating around heaven. It goes that fast. It does. So I think that... Um, I think that in the sense of, I, I believe in the inner things of people. I've never really cared all that much about physical things, you know, I mean, I don't want uh -huh. yachts. I still have my one little, one little apartment in New York and one little apartment here. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm, I, I just think it's the work and the being and the relationships and the joy and the fun of life and doing your work and all that, you know. Sitting here this afternoon talking to you, you have given me joy talking oh, to you because oh. you have you have just said something that I have learned from you, being the simple human being. Just to be on this on earth, just like this earth, we have to share. This earth, everyone mm -hmm. has to share. Everyone is rushing mm -hmm. to something. Yeah. And it's I think your, we, Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think we get scared out of it. See, I'm not saying, l listen, you know, I found this wonderful thing and I'm, you know, think right. this is all that. I think that when you reach out to someone or, or open to someone, right they'll come back to you mostly uh -huh. some people are so scared that they they mm -hmm. won't at all it's like mm -hmm. new york cab drivers you yes. know you say a couple friendly words and they're uh -huh. the friendliest people in the world <laughs> <laughs> otherwise you don't and they're blah, 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 blah. but so i think i think that it's um i think it's that we're frightened into life is so tough for it everybody. is it is everybody's out there and they think god they gotta work and they gotta make the money right. and they gotta get this and they gotta worry about it.